So good evening and welcome to our first Fab Talks of the year. My name is Rachel and I'm the social media manager of NHS Fabulous Stuff. And I'm joined here with Danny, who is the Fab Ambassador Coordinator, who's going to be monitoring the chat, and Vanda, who's the Fab Ambassador, who will also be monitoring the chat. So um, just a quick reminder that we are recording this session. And if you've got any questions, we'll be great to have them. So just pop them in the chat and we'll we'll reach them at the end. So um, without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to announce Amanda. He's going to tell us all us about home share. But before we do that, I just wondered if we could have an icebreaker. So Amanda, what is your favourite pizza topping? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say pepperoni. <laughs> Can't beat a good pepperoni pizza, can you? I, no. I, I'm, I love a Hawaiian with pineapple, but it always brings up a debate. <laughs> Yeah, should you have pineapple on a pizza? <laughs> exactly, the classic debate. Okay, so do you want to tell us a bit about yourself and what exactly is HomeShare? Lovely, thank you very much for inviting me today to, um, you know, share what we do. So um, I'm Amanda Clark and um, I've been uh, working within the HomeShare um, sector, uh, well, for 12 years now. Um, and for those of you who don't know about home share, home share basically is the idea of, of two people living together. Um, both have got something to bring to the party. One would be um, a householder who would obviously have the home and the spare bedroom. Um, and the householders generally are older, but they're, sometimes we um, help do home shares for families as well. And I, I might talk about that a little bit, bit later on. Uh, but most of them are elderly. Uh, most of them want to remain in their own home, uh, but they're finding it hard to do um, sort of general tasks around the house that that we do and perhaps take, you know, don't think about the fact that we are doing them, like putting out bins, opening jar tops, that kind of thing. And also a lot of elderly people are quite isolated and lonely. So, again, the idea of home share for them is a very positive one. The other person is what we call the home sharer, and they generally are younger, although saying that we have um, some householders that are in their 60s and 70s, um, but generally they're younger. They have to be over the age of 24 and they are looking for a home. So they come to us because they're looking for a home uh, and they like the idea of uh, living with someone and helping them. In exchange for giving the practical help each week, they get very, very low cost rent. So it's a real win win for both sides. You know, one person needs a bit of help in their home and the other person is looking for somewhere to live. And it means that they can live very low cost. Um, and also, you know, we get so many young people that say, actually, I'm lonely, too. You know, I don't want to just live in. A, um, a room, which is what so many younger people do now. I want to live in a home and that's what HomeShare does. It brings two people together and it creates a little home for those two people. That's an absolutely fantastic initiative and how amazing that you're helping not just the, the home sharers but the home givers as well. That's just yeah. amazing. How exactly does it work? So if how do, do people have to self-refer or how, how does it work? Yeah. So at the moment, we're just having a real campaign with uh, the NHS, uh, social care, social workers, uh, social prescribers. So anyone listening that is in that category, please, please, if you do have somebody who you think would benefit from this service, then um, they can be uh, the person can self refer or um, the professional could give us a call if they're not sure if the service would uh, work for them. We operate um, our business across the UK so we can help anyone anywhere in the UK. Obviously what the householder needs is to have a home and a spare room uh, but we don't worry about what the house looks like as long as it's um, clean and, um, and, and warm at this time of year uh, then anyone can come forward and say yes I'd like to have a home sharer. Um, with the sharers, they usually, we usually find sharers, the home sharers, the younger people through um, places, platforms, social media and platforms that, that people go to when they're looking to rent a room. And a lot of people don't necessarily or haven't heard about home share, although we um, are actually doing um, more and more we know to publicise that. And so people are beginning to know about home share. Um, but they generally, sharers come to us, they're looking for a home. And we take them through the process of whether they'd be suitable. The kind of people that we're looking for are people that people that have got uh, you know a kind and caring nature. Um, 
and uh, and then we obviously then start the process with them. The uh, referral process for the householder is very, very straightforward. It's really about finding out about them as a human being and the kind of person they want to live with. Um, you know, everyone's got different ideas about the kind of person they want to live with. And this is where the matching process comes in. And that's something that we are experts at. Um, you know, in fact, my um, colleagues here call me a bit of the witch, call me the witch, <laughs> witchy woo, they call me. Um, and that's really just because it's good, it's good of having the understanding of, of what sort of links people together. And it's really exciting when you kind of find those links, when you start talking to people. And it can be very small links, you know, like, um, you know, a household has got a son that lives in Spain and then it turns out that the sharer comes from that sort of region of Spain and instantly there's a connection. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those connections. Um, and so, you know, it's quite time consuming what we do, uh, both for um, talking to the household and making sure that they are, you know, they understand what they're going into um, and equally, and then making sure that we thoroughly vet um, the sharers and I'm sure I can tell you a bit more about that because that's something people always want to know about and always think that well you know uh, what happens if um, you know what happens if but the if never really happens in all the years I've been doing this it never happens I think it's about making sure you put two people together who who are well matched um, well, it's like you're match, matchmaking, isn't it? It's just in a it different is. way than ever, but it's matchmaking. It's it's finding out similar personalities or similar interests, and then oh, that that sounds amazing. So you have a day. Exactly, you're right. It's exactly right. It's about matchmaking, you know, and it's just about it's about being interested in people. From from our perspective, it's about being interested in people, and then matching those like-minded people together. It's, as you're talking, I'm kind of having light bulbs going on because I, so I, I, for my lived experience background is I have two stoma bags. I don't have a bladder and a bowel and I was very, very ill at quite a big point in my life. And I had, I had um, help at home with a carer. Um, I can't remember what it's called now, but the expenses and it was taken away from me. And I wish mm. I'd known about this because I mm. wanted to stay independent and it was really difficult. But I, I wish I had known about this because I would have loved that. That would have worked yeah. perfectly for me to help yeah. me just get through that difficult time in my life. Yes to get yes. back up to then living because for me what well, the most important thing and the whole what matters to you campaign is about what mattered to me was I lived independently mm -hmm. you know I wanted and to keep that and that's very interesting you should say that because obviously just mentioning before that it's mainly for elderly people but it can be for other people too and your experience you, you know what you've just said is we absolutely could have helped and we do help you know we've got quite a few younger people who have mental health issues you know maybe they're bipolar um and they just need someone to keep an eye on them and someone that's understanding towards them um we've had we've got quite a lot of uh, people that perhaps are in their 50s or 60s and they're a couple and one of them perhaps unfortunately has got dementia and so the sharer actually not only supports the person perhaps with dementia but also supports the other person who is probably doing a lot of caring um, and they also need a friend and someone that sometimes they can have a laugh with or a bit of supper together or something like that. Um, so you're you're absolutely right. It's 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 really anyone um, that that you know perhaps just needs a bit of help around the house. Now the sharers, the home sharers, are not carers, so they don't do any personal care, but they do all those things that you do in your own home that actually, if you're not feeling well, are very hard to do. Um, so, you know, all those practical things like a bit of cooking and shopping and a bit of light housework and putting the bins out on the right day and maybe um, going out and watering the plants in the summer. And as you said, it enables you to live and remain independent in your own home, which is what I think the majority of people that we come into contact want to do. Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's those, those kind of things like putting the bins out helps keep take a home over. It helps. Yes. I know for me, I was really 
sort of um, fixated on I had to have my my floor had to be clean and but I couldn't hoover you know and I was picking yes. up stuff off the floor and so those kind of things are great and I was going to actually say but you answered the question for me because you said share the sharers aren't carers yes so do they get any training or if they have any if they say something happens or do they have contacts that they can yes get well they're volunteer we class them as volunteers so okay. when we when we're actually um interviewing them we go through a very detailed interview with them I mean you know you have to want to do it to put up with all the things that we ask them to do before we even interview them and that's done for a reason because that's to show commitment um we obviously give them a very um sort of light training um safeguarding training so they understand what safeguarding training is um we're always at the end of the phone we're not an emergency service so we're not we're only here office hours Monday to uh, Friday but what we encourage courage is that they have very good support network with the family you know because at the end of the day we're not it's not a professional care company we're not caring for people in the sense um that we're doing personal care um and the family are still responsible or the person is responsible for themselves but we always make sure that there is somebody in the background that the sharer can go to if there if there's something happening or something um, not quite right. Equally, we've got years and years of experience between the team here, so we can always help. We we tend to help sort of a lot with the if things perhaps are a bit bumpy along the way. Like with any people that live together, you do have your ups and downs. And so what we do is we very often will just listen and, you know, end up having a laugh about something and it sort of relaxes the person or we come up with ideas or ways that we can make it better or we might even then talk to the other person as well. So we we, we sort of act as a sort of intermediary sometimes. And I always say it's the only relationship I know where it works with three of us in it. <laughs> It's really, um, you know, we, we, it, it's just a way of of just saying, look, come on, let's compromise here. And sometimes people just can't see it. It doesn't happen that often, but it's obviously, it's life, isn't it? When you live together, um, and particularly when you f they first move in with each other, it can be difficult and embarrassing and not quite sure what to do. And, you know, so with all the will in the world of what we put them through and the ideas that we give them and tell them what's how it's going to be, when it actually happens they they we are here to, and they can pick up the phone to us on either side um we also my colleague caroline does uh, dementia training she's an ambassador for for the um um dementia friends so we do particularly when um a sharer is moving in with someone with dementia we will ensure that they have had the dementia training just so that they understand a bit more about dementia it's not because they need to be professional on it um, as I said, they very much are volunteers. They're not being paid for what they do. They're just living in the house and they've got the room. Obviously, that that's in lieu of, of that. But it's it's rent. It's not payment. Um, so she does that. And um, we've all got a very good understanding of dementia. And we also will ensure if someone has got mental health issues that they have um, perhaps a, a mental health um, nurse or, or supporter. Um, so that again, particularly if you're living with someone with bipolar or autism or something like that, that there's someone else that you can go to who understands that person's needs more um, and that and can be and can support the home sharer as well. Will the will the this shit or forgive me if I get the name wrong? Is it the shit the person that lives lives there to help the home sharer? Home they, sharer. Yes. Yeah, home sharer. Will they do they? Um, when say they need to contact anybody like like you said mental health services or crisis team will they do that or will they they contact the family and liaise that way um it depends I mean again it's all what we keep try to keep it very relaxed and very it's not it's not very there's no set processes because you are living together that's the whole point you know you're the person living there we the way we describe it is you're living there as a family friend or a or a, or a granddaughter you know the way you would be with your granddaughter so it depends I mean we've got one lady that has um, quite severe bipolar um, and she can um, spiral very quickly so in her in her case uh, the, the home sharer has the um, telephone number of the mental health team the crisis team and she knows what to do and we made sure before she moved in she knew what to do but I mean she's been absolutely amazing and she's been living with this lady for nearly 18 months and the lady's only had one really bad episode in that time so that just proves 
the, the actual worth of what we do because um, and the savings it's making obviously to the NHS before the girl moved in the lady was constantly phoning the ambulance um, at night because she was worried that she was going to do something to herself um, and they obviously as you as you probably as everyone knows they have they come out and they've had to break down the door in the past because then she's fallen asleep and not realized you know so um, yeah so for, for them um, you know, it, the mental health team, it, it's it's amazing because it's it's helping them as well in their job. Um, so, of course, they, you know, they're very, very glad to take a call if she needs it. That's fantastic. And I think we're human beings. We need connection. And when we're in isolation yeah. and sometimes I know with myself, sometimes when I things aren't good, but when I just talk or I'm in company with somebody else, it makes it easier. It doesn't mean that I don't mm. have physical things going on, but it, it mm. does. It does help have that community ident like identification talking mm. so you shared a few positive experiences but have you got mm. any other like good stories you want to share that have yeah come from... I could go on all night so you're going to need to stop me. no I love it yeah you've got an hour so it's all good <laughs> um well I, I, I there's one actually just recently that that um actually and the, and the lady is uh an, an NHS uh I think she works in in uh, in mental health, uh, so she has become a home sharer. Um, and her lovely story is that um, she's I mean she's living with an elderly lady. Quite I think she's in her nineties. Uh, but you know the positive thing for the home sharer is they've they've got this amazing relationship. Uh, because she's paying, because the home share is paying very, very low rent. I mean, we only charge £150 a month. Um, she's managed to save up to buy her own property. Uh, so, but so wonderful. She loves being with this lady so much that she's actually not even starting to look to buy her own property yet. She's made the savings, but she wants to carry on living with, with this lady um, for, for a while longer so you know that's an amazing story and we have many more like that and I think what it also does it's very interesting when you talk to um, people international Europeans and people from other countries they can't understand why we don't sort of we're not all looking after our elderly people in the way that perhaps they do in their own countries um, but it's really interesting because when they actually come in and join the scheme, they then realise actually the scheme is better than living with your own grandparents because you've got this sort of different connection. And what it does is it seems to empower the elderly person, the householder, because they've got a new friend that's nothing to do with the family, nothing to do with people sort of within the family organising for them. And I think with all the years I've been doing this, I've feel that what happens is that elderly people lose the chance to actually control anything everything's organized for them or they're told what to do and then suddenly when they have a home sharing living with them they can um, make some decisions for themselves you know on a day-to-day -day basis because whereas perhaps a daughter would be doing a food shop and it all just being delivered now the share is sitting down with them at the beginning of each week and saying right okay I'm going to cook you know Monday Tuesday and Friday um what you fancy eating and then one of them will say oh well I actually like this and I'm, you know oh well I like this so then they plan their they do the meal plan together um and those small things can make such a difference to someone's life you know and also we also say sharers often say to us well I can cook but I can't be bothered to cook just for myself yeah. so you know they enjoy it they enjoy the interaction of sitting down and eating with someone as well so yeah it's it's, it's amazing incredible and so the turnover if you for a home share if you wanted to apply to be a home share mm. what is the general turnover until you maybe you make the match and and they move in i mean the so one of the reasons obviously we desperately want to promote what we do although we've been going since 2006 and and why we're so delighted to be able to do this talk is because what we really need is we need more householders we need people to cut to um spread the word for us about just what a great scheme it is we're very obviously very aware of the fact that a lot of people don't want someone living with them but if they are like you said perhaps not managing in some way but want to stay independent in their own home this is a very very good way of doing that it's very low cost for them and it is a solution that I feel people in the NHS and social care should be taking more seriously as a as a way to suggest to people this is the way for you to stay in your own home um so I think that now I've completely forgotten what it was <laughs> I think you were 
I was telling you because no, that's on. that was very interesting. <laughs> I just asked about the 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 time scale of when yes, you, when sorry. you started. So okay, so we we always start with the householder. Um, and so when a householder comes to us, depending on where they are in the country, we start out with them and then we start looking for a, for a home sharer, depending on the location and depending how sort of, you know, where it is, because obviously we do have some that are quite rural. We have others in towns and cities. The towns and cities we match usually fairly quickly. Um, but I'd say from start to finish um, in a big city from start to finish, it probably only takes about six to eight weeks the whole thing wow. in 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 smaller sort of towns or rural areas it can take longer but you know what it's such potluck and we have people bringing us all over you know from all over the place and they ask us they always ask us you know how long is it going to take to match me with somebody and we always say how long is a piece of string because <laughs> it's so difficult to say you know and in fact I just as an example and um, we've just started matching um, a lady with dementia in Macclesfield and I wasn't sure we hadn't actually had any experience or much experience in that in that sort of area that region but we found two people really quickly within the first week who both oh. potentially could um, be a match so it really depends it, it's it's extraordinary I think um, the thing is it's 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 about people knowing about it as well you know I think if people knew more about it as well they could um, uh, promote it and then I think we'd be able to do a lot more and hopefully by by doing I know you did the podcast with Danny and and also by by doing this we can help get that out there because yeah it, yeah. it definitely needs to be known about because unless you don't know because it, the savings that it must in help with the NHS and the social care yeah. savings must be massive and not only that but the benefits for both the the home giver and the home sharer yes. is just like because yeah. I, I, it's funny when I, I lived, I've lived in a few places, and I've always made friends with my neighbours that are elderly, and I've, I've always loved spending time with them, going around for coffee, because I just learn. I'm, I'm a bit of a geek, and I love World War Two and vintagey, so I love just like finding out history of like yes. what life was like, and it just, I can just imagine it really being mm. so beneficial for both. Yeah, well, I've got a lovely story actually about a gentleman who was a. Uh, he was a professor, a medical professor, and he was, when we met him, he was 91, and he was still going to the lab at St George's Hospital in in, um, in Tooting, F, uh, sort of three times a week. Um, and they were still, I mean, I don't know what they were letting him do there, but he was still doing research, apparently. And he used to drive himself in there. And unfortunately, you know, he was beginning to deteriorate in his family were very worried about him driving every day across or you know three days a week to tooting um and we managed to match him with a medical student who was a late uh, she she was 27 so she she'd done something before she went into medicine um and so you know it was quite a tough learning curve for her um having sort of not gone straight from university into studying so she was having to sort of like relearn how to study well, he never had time to go to the lab after that because he would say to her in the morning over breakfast, right, OK, what, what are you doing today? What research do you need? And then he was doing some of her research for her. And then they would sit in the evening and discuss it or he would read her sort of essay and give her a bit of advice on that. Um, you know, it was it was wonderful. And that just shows as well how the connections, how people can help each other. And of course, his life changed so much because whereas he used to go to the lab because he was lonely and, um, you know, didn't feel any kind of use anymore. Suddenly he was telling his family, oh, no, I, you know, I can't talk now because I've got to go and do such and such for, you know, the girl that he was living with. And um, it completely changed his life. And we were, again, very lucky that we were able to, you know, keep him in his home until he passed away uh, with uh, with with the sharer, which was which was lovely. So he he wow. got his wish, which was to stay at home. That's amazing. And what does do the share? Will the share then get support for when? you know, that happens, do they get support yes. afterwards? Yeah, they do. I mean, we can, we can never guarantee that we can move a sharer to another situation. We'll always try if we can. Again, if we had a lot more opportunities, we had a lot more houses, and, and it would get more and more easy to do that. Uh, but we always support people um, because they it's bereavement for them as well. Um, I think, you know, we've all been bereaved here in this office, so I think we all understand what it's like, and um, and we do support them as much as well as we can. And um, 
you know, the families do as well, because they've, they've usually made a wonderful connection with the family as well. And, and they'll be involved in, in in sort of saying goodbye. And and very often they'll do things like they stay in the house until the house is sold so that the family don't have to worry about an empty house. You know, so many practical things as well that, that can happen at the end, which often families say to us has been invaluable because, you know, we would have been worried about having an empty house and we know that she's there and she's kind of looked after the house until it's been sold. Wow, and it sounds like you're a really close, close knit team as well. So that probably helps. It sounds like you're all really kind of approachable and personal, and you have to be doing this. Yes. But it, it sounds like it. It definitely works. And yeah, yeah, no, it's human. It's human beings, and I think that. Um, I mean, obviously, we haven't touched on the safeguarding, and that's obviously something that a lot of people always, you know, are, are skeptical about. But genuinely, I can honestly say that we've had very few safeguarding issues over the years. And sort of the worst scenario is someone is a drinker and it's usually the older person that is, not the sharer. But we have had a couple of sharers that have been. But again, that's why we keep in touch with people on a regular basis. And we're a very open book with family members as well, because then that's the way, you know, if anything, you, you usually sense if something's not quite right. We have had one situation where we didn't, we had no idea, uh, and neither did the family, interestingly. And actually, one of them was a GP, but they never noticed that she was drinking. But, you know, th again, I think often people say to us, oh, why is it we have to pay monthly for the service? I always explain that by saying, well, it's sort of like an insurance policy. We're here in case you need us. You might not need us very often, but we are here if you need us. And if if something happens, we will always be there to sort it out and um, you know in that particular case that's what we did um, you know the agreements are set up their home share license agreements they're licensed to occupy um, if something went wrong then the person would be given notice and then they would be asked to leave and we would make sure they left you know that's that's our responsibility um, but as I said it, it's very rarely happened and and usually the worst the worst that happens is that they have a bit of a falling out and you know everyone gets a bit sort of stressed about that and and in fact we had one last week and actually then they made up and because we had lots of conversations with each party but then they made up and realized they were as they said we're better together than apart you know no. so but when, when you live with somebody you do have ups and downs and, yeah, and you, you and you're learning you're learning to get through and and if you don't know the person and you're kind of learning that as well we have a few questions that come through so banda said do you get a lot of trouble from relative safeguarding concerns i think you answered some of yeah, that yeah well yeah that's interesting i mean i think you know again I, I i would love to labor the point on this because i know people that work within social care and the nhs are um you know do worry about uh, about this the thing i would say about it is you know we do the same kind of checks that, that a care agency do for a carer. Uh, we do a fully enhanced DBS check. We do a much more detailed interview than a care company would do. You know, we find out everything about the sharer's life beforehand. And that often can bring up the red flags, you know, if, if there are any. Um, and we keep in, in regular contact. But what I always say is a carer comes in and out of the house. Um, and often there'll be, you know, more than one person coming in and out of the house on one day. Um, and so if, you know, because the one thing that people always say is, well, you know, can we trust her? Or, you know, is she going to take things? But you wouldn't normally expect someone to do that in their living environment. Um, you know, it's more likely that a carer would do something like that because they're going in and out and they're anonymous. Um, so, you know, in terms of theft and things like that, we have never, ever in the 16 years that we've been operating ever had any situation like that. Now, obviously, with dementia, you might get someone who thinks that someone's taken something. But, you know, it, again, that's that's, you know, that's different. And we have to sort that out. And, and again, it, it very rarely is that anyone's taken it. They've just hidden it somewhere. Um, but I would labour the point on that because people use that as a real negative as to not introducing the idea of home share to people. And it's one of those myths that's, you know, I mean, I'm a safeguarding lead, I'm trained in safeguarding, but you know, this is, we're talking about human beings living together. So you can guide people, um, uh, but you know, you don't have to worry about safeguarding because if you want to live there and why would you do anything to damage that, you know? And Van did say we are a sceptical a skeptical bunch, sorry, Amanda. And, uh, <laughs> Another question that she's put is how how much does it cost a homeowner in monetary terms to enroll in the home share programme? 
question. So um, we have a flat fee of £150 uh, a month. So you don't pay, well, you, we have a registration fee as well of, of, of £72. So you pay £72 to register and that starts us off doing uh, the searching. So we ask for that because, you know, you can imagine the costs for us to, to do that search. And we do bespoke searches, so we do a search for that person. Because I think you went, you mentioned earlier, and I never I never mentioned, I never said anything, but we tend not to keep lists of people because we don't keep lists of sharers because what we're doing is we're, we're looking for someone who's looking to move then. Uh, so occasionally we have people that come to the website and say, look, if something comes up, I'd be very interested. But again, we, t we really want to match the right person. So we don't just say, oh, the next person on the list, you can go and live there. So we do advertise each individual situation as it comes in. So we charge that registration fee just to help us with the cost of all the advertising. We then, um, when we found the right person, the householder will then start paying the £150 a month. And now that is paid to share and care. And that's for the service that we offer. We're not, we are a, a CIC, which is a community interest company, and we, um, you know, our social enterprise company. But obviously we do have costs. We have an office, we have a team of people. So we think the fairest way is that everyone that participates and benefits from the scheme pays into the scheme. So the householder will pay £150 a month, which if you think about it, they're getting 15 hours of support a week for that. That's uh, broken down as 10 hours of practical help and about five hours of company. But majority of sharers don't they're not clock watching you know a lot of what they do they do together and but if you if you sort of divide went down took that down to um you know 150 pounds that's uh, 35 pounds a week um you know if you think that a live out supporter coming in and perhaps cooking some meals and everything would charge at least 10 pounds an hour it's extremely good value for money um and the sharer the home sharer pays the same so the home sharer pays us because they've got somewhere to live um, um and uh, and the householder pays us because they've got some help and that money that we receive each month um from both parties um enables us to be able to run the scheme and I, I guess facilitate. So just to just to clarify, just for myself, yeah. really. So there's no database of the home, the home sharers. There's you don't have a database where people. It's just as and when. Well, we do have a database, but 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 we don't really. I mean, we do look at it, obviously, when we get something new coming in. And if if people are sort of watching this now and would would like to. Um, actually put their name on the database they can and we do look at it every time we get someone new coming in but we do find with the database what well, I think what I was trying to admit what I meant was that we, it's not just the next person on the database gets the home you know we are looking for the match so but people are very welcome to go to our website and um, look at the sharers tab so if they're looking for a home they go to the sharers tab and then we have all the current current opportunities listed there and they will see that there's a form that they can fill in and that obviously joins them to our database. Um, yeah. So what would you say is like the main challenge? At the moment? I think the main challenge is <laughs> getting people to know about what we do. It is extremely, it's extremely successful. Um, we have started talking to the government about what, you know, making them putting, trying to get it on there and, uh, and um, the Department of Health and Social, and it's one of those uh, social care. It's one of those conversations that always starts with, "Oh no, I've never heard of you." And then when they talk, when you start to talk about it, they say, "What an amazing idea!" So that's one challenge. I think the second challenge we're very aware of is that a lot of elderly people they want help, they want company, but they don't want someone living in their home. So we're doing as much as we can to sort of again promote the idea of. Um, you know, if you want independence and you do need a bit of help, it's a really good way of, of, of having someone and trying to make them kind of accept that, you know, someone living in their home is perhaps better than the alternative. Of course, what happens with a lot of people is that they wait too long. So they wait until they're at a point where really a home sharer is not suitable anymore. Um, so what we're try, trying to do is ensure that people 
come to us a bit earlier and we have actually just started uh we started this year a new or a new organization which um is a slightly different one in the fact that it, it's it's aimed at younger people older people younger people that have got a home um and they can take a pay be paid a little bit of rent for for share for, for letting their room um so there's not much help given but but the householder gets some rent instead and the idea of that is to hopefully try and get people to understand and, and actually recognize that living with somebody else if they're well matched is actually a pleasurable thing not something to be sort of poo-pooed um and then by that by they get used to having someone living in their home then when they need to they can move to the share and care model um so that that's the idea so the, those i think that that's a very frustrating thing is is trying to get people to realize they need a bit of help it's also trying to get people to recognize it early enough that they need the help um the one thing that we've been talking to the department of health about is um you know because obviously we know that um if we know that we can make savings um on the budgets um yeah. And but, you know, of course, it's one of those things where if someone says, well, no, I'm not interested in that. There's nothing more one can be do about it. But again, this is why doing things like this and, and promoting all our case studies is really important, because I think then it makes it real and it makes people realise, actually, you know, we're not going to force anyone onto them um, and we will look for that right person. We're not just going to going to put anyone in there. So so that, that's really important to say. Um, and I think that. Um, all that we can do is just keep talking about it. And also something that sort of happened recently is obviously the cost of living crisis. Um, a sharer can contribute towards the bills and the utilities. So something else to think about, you know, when you come across people that are really struggling financially, older, older people particularly, having a home share does help them in the respect that the home sharer can contribute towards the utilities so so is that split is that split or is that a is that a must or is that just if it's a contribution to... and we we discuss that with the householder before we even start looking we have we have a cap we have a cap of six about 60 pounds a month um because obviously we recognize that the the sharer is do, is going to be doing you know quite a lot i mean most of our sharers uh, we have this sort of like, you know, it's 15 hours of support a week, but most of them do a little, uh, do more than that. Um, but again, if they're asked to do too much, then that's again where we get involved to try and sort out the problems. And the other thing I haven't said, which is really important as well, is home share sits really well alongside having a domiciliary care package. So because obviously we discussed at the beginning, it's not, they are not carers, but it does sit very well um, with domiciliary care. So again, that's another thing that we get involved with when we see that perhaps a sharer is ending up doing too much. We might talk to family members about putting in other help as well, you know, that comes in. Um, and, and very often our clients perhaps get to a point where it's all too much, then they move on to perhaps a, a living care or going to a residential home. But I'm also pleased to say that that we have quite a few clients that have more than one sharer. So they will have two people living with them if they've got the space. Wow. And that means that they get double the amount of help. And, you know, we gave we've had some wonderful stories where we've had people who have with dementia and with care packages managed to stay in their house until they pass away. And, you know, again, I think you asked me off camera, you know, do I enjoy what I do? And I absolutely do. And these are some of the reasons why, because I go home at night and I think how amazing that that lady was allowed, could stay in her home, even with dementia to the very end. Because often when we talk to people, when they ring us up and they say that a parent has just been diagnosed with dementia, they're obviously feeling very sad and they're not really sure what the outcome will be and and you know they want them to remain in their own home um and and we have been able to do that with with quite a few of our clients so yeah it's amazing and your passion definitely definitely shines through we've got another question and it's what about things like council tax and paying of bills you answered the paying of bills question yeah. is the responsibility of the homeowner yeah the council taxes and actually again we are <laughs> trying our hardest to get the government and the local councils to listen to us about council tax because at the moment 
if you have a home sharer living with you, you do lose your single person's allowance, which in some cases can be quite a lot. So again, we do discuss that with a family um, at, at the start and perhaps some of the money towards the utilities goes towards the council tax. Obviously, if the person going to live there is a student, then they don't pay council tax anyway, so that's OK. So I think it's something um, it's very much on our radar to ensure that going forward, um, councils sort of have some tick box for a home sharer um, because I think uh, you know but again it's about pr producing data to show and it's very difficult to produce data to show um, how, how happy someone is and they're going less to the doctor because of it or they're not going to A&E you know it's, it's really hard and obviously the numbers of people that we're helping is in the hundreds not the thousands and thousands and thousands and of course the councils aren't really interested until it's thousands of pounds but then equally my argument to that is well then you won't notice if you don't get that little bit of extra council tax you know so it's it's one of those situations so at the moment um yes it does affect council tax um but we try where we can to therefore include a bit of the council tax cost into the utilities to ensure that money's you know they get some money back and because it's an open communication, if they've got any questions or concerns around it, I'm sure, could, you know, you would chat it through and yeah. discuss and re-discuss. Re and so they're aware of everything before they start. Absolutely. And and we have we have had some experience. I mean, some councils are, are more open to understanding what we're doing and accepting it and just saying, OK, and they give you a, a code, you know, so that person doesn't lose their single person's allowance. Or I mean, the other thing I haven't said is that, um, you know, it is something that someone can use attendance allowance for. So you can go to your GP and uh, ask for the uh, lowest level of attendance allowance. So that can help with. Uh, well, paying the, our um, facilitation fee each month, but also towards the perhaps extra cost you might have on council tax. Great. And uh, how many staff? Another questions. How many staff do you have within your team, Amanda? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the, well, there's there's five five of us. So uh, you know, so we're a small team, and. Um, so that's why I said, and, and also we, you know, we have an office. Um, a lot, some of the home share um, organisations. I mean, we're not the only one. Uh, there are uh, probably two or three really large ones like ours. I think we are the largest. Uh, some are um, smaller, and they just deal with one particular area. Uh, but you know, again, what we what we're trying to do is lead the way in terms of making home share. A professional service um it's sort of grown you know when things grow organically they can yeah. be pockets of very small things and i think what we're particularly trying to do at share and care is to ensure that we are creating um a service and an industry that you know i'm hoping before i retire <laughs> we've actually got industry recognition <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So is there anything else you would like to mention before we wind down and see if there's any more questions? Is there anything else that you'd like to say that you, you've forgotten or want to get across? I think I've covered everything. Mm -hmm. I hope I have. Um, no, I think I think uh, generally, as I said, I just I just want I don't want people to think that home share is just for older people it can help lots of different people um and i sort of i think i touched on it but you know we've got a couple of uh, families and they've got perhaps an autistic child who uh, needs some low level support and that and it works very well i think the most important thing to think about home share uh, is it is safe <laughs> that's what we do going through some an organization like ours where you're going to get a professional service means that you are going to get a professional service and the person coming to live with you although they're a volunteer they will be very aware of what their responsibilities are um and so that people don't need to worry about that it's safe and it changes lives yes that's good. I like that. Might use it as a strap line. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and, I, and I think, you know, because sharing is caring and that's that's why we, we yeah. sort of named the company the way we did. Um, you know, you can if you share someone's life, you I think 
you'd have to be very hard and stone-like if you didn't start to care. Um, and that, you know, again, I, I sort of didn't mention that, but, you know, we've got lots of sharers that still go and see their elderly people, even though they've moved out and moved on with their lives. Um, and the other thing I didn't mention was that we do look for um, a, at least a 12 month commitment. Now, obviously with an elderly person, you can't always guarantee what's going to happen but we like both parties to go into it thinking that it's going to be a 12-month commitment but understanding that things change particularly with older people uh, but the notice period is 28 days on either side brilliant i think danny's got her video on i don't know if she's Danny, got any <laughs> questions it's not necessarily a question it was just really a comment of just like hearing the passion from both sides because obviously I've been privileged to have the podcast with you know a service user's daughter and like listening to the passion has just been really really lovely to hear because I think they're the kind of things that do make a difference when people are passionate about improving care and support and actually from my district nursing days and I said this to to the service user's daughter when I when I did my district nursing days I can already think in my mind of service users who really would have benefited being staying yeah. at home longer because yeah. actually it wasn't anything to do with you know ability to be in the home it was just they couldn't figure out how to put a kettle on anymore or yeah. feed that you know and, and simple things like that and then the worries of families when they put in electric kettles on the hob and yes you know and things yeah. like that because it you know because obviously they go back to when that's what they yes. used to do yes yeah um so it, it was really good to hear just the longevity of keeping somebody at home from it yeah um so just to thank you because it yeah. um you know it's been a lovely um session to listen to you but also just to kind of piece together the two sides has been really good for my benefit so everybody who's watching i recommend listening to the podcast too <laughs> thank you so much for having me really appreciate it sounds like they they go well together with the with the podcast that you did and then this one bit more expl explanation and yeah. I the the just going back quickly where you mentioned the stories you were doing the mm. you were shining light have you done any videos like on YouTube around it and we you... yes we have and uh, we were very lucky that we, we've got there are a few videos on our um on our website as well which I would really recommend because they really again they capture the essence of what of how people feel um and and what what difference was made to their life and actually just on the just suddenly came into my head when we were talking about um people with dementia you know very often they love to have animals around them but they wouldn't remember how to feed an animal they just keep feeding it um oh there you go my dog started <laughs> just on cue as well <laughs> that's why he's saying it's been your time to finish <laughs> but it's you know having an animal in your home can be a really important thing and again a home sharer can actually make sure that the cat or dog is fed and taken to the vet when it's needed to and that kind of thing you know so there's so many different things that a home sharer can do I just want I just really hope that more people will talk about it and um, encourage people to do it Amazing. Well, thank you so much for, you know, giving us your time today and, well. and telling us more about this. And we, we hope that, you know, if you're listening, share it in your platform, share yes. it, share it in your trust and your organisation and help get the word out there. And I'm excited to see how this grows and thank be you. great to see it, see all the work you're putting in with the campaigns that it gets recognition because it, it does change and save help lives and save lives in respect of people are lonely and you know it's not just measured in actually saving lives it's just in the whole well-being yes. and, and yeah. mental health so yeah no fantastic yeah. thank you so much for for your time and no, have a lovely evening yes thank you Rachel and you too really nice